So when I made this thumbnail the other day, I was not expecting to be talking about who is the king of the bears. I was expecting to talk about who is the king of the 10% rally in the stock market after Jerome Powell basically gave you uh, the ultimate green light to rally, rally, rally. And if you watched our live stream last night, you could have heard us talk about how futures were just going green up 0.46%, not even open in Asia. And I was basically saying I could easily see new all-time highs in the next two weeks. And I think the market took it personally because today was just a bloodbath in every sense of the word, where we basically, if we go to the 15-minute chart, just looking at what happened, right? It wasn't even a close five, 10 minutes. We, we started selling off, going into the ISM. We'll get into that in just a second, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you all so much for tuning in. But 10 o'clock hits, ISM comes out. And for all those that don't know what ISM is, it's basically the expansion or contractionary phases of the market, right? And it came in absolutely horrible. New orders came in horrible. Manufacturing employment, again, we talked about this and it's gonna be one of the topics that we discuss on the weekend deep dive. We give you that video every single week and I'll have the previous one linked in the description below so you guys can check it out if you missed it where we go over the levels, go over the biggest winners and losers, debate what's gonna be happening during the market, some of the plays that we're gonna be doing. And these levels are very, very important. And we're gonna be talking about them today, but also we're gonna be talking about Amazon, Apple, and I'm actually gonna even talk about Intel because, oh boy, if you, you've been holding Intel, uh, dear God, you are holding on for dear life because it, I did not expect that. And we'll get into all that in today. So thank you all so much for tuning in, first of all. So ISM, which was the main thing we wanted to talk about, it came in absolutely horrible. ISM PMI coming in again in contraction, heading bound back to severe contraction territory and yields were not having any of it today. The uh, bond market was basically cratering today. If we go to the daily, you can clearly see every single yield has basically fallen off a cliff. 30 year, 20, 10, 10 year, which is correlated to your mortgage. You know, everyone's cheering, hey, mortgages are gonna be cheaper. Again, we've talked about this. If mortgages fall, then the housing principle goes up and affordability goes right into the toilet. Similarly to how your chip stocks were doing today, like NVIDIA, right? Just, you could not have asked as a bearer, like you literally, an HC, I know you're watching this video. It, if you if you didn't short NVIDIA today, I'm gonna be so disappointed with you when you get on the live stream again on Tuesday. So throw in the comment section if you actually shorted NVIDIA or have a bearish position on it, or are you holding NVIDIA? I would love to know your thoughts. And while you guys are down there in the comment section below, throw a like on the video. And also, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and having bell notifications enabled. That way, you know, when we come out with these videos, we do usually do earnings play videos. However, I did not do one for Amazon or Apple just because I was saying, I think the bullish sentiment is not going to sway into the subsequent next earnings. I think Meta was just a flash in the pan with the expectations of how they beat and they really did beat really well. So I think that was a one off. I think analysts were horribly wrong and we'll highlight that in today's video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the end. I'm going to make sure you guys get as much condensed information as humanly possible so you know what's to go into the close of the week. And there is actually a bullish theory going to be talked about today. However, uh, Amazon, I'm oh, sorry, NVIDIA, you came to that 50. You touched it and then you said, bye-bye, and just sold off completely, wiping out all the gains from previously. S&P as well, just cratering below the 50. I said, if you came back here, it all comes down to Friday, guys, right? If you hold 543.59 by some figment of the imagination and you don't break 537.45, then oh boy, it's gonna be a spicy one for next week and we're gonna be having a fantastic week in deep dive, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. However, I am not convinced that's gonna happen. I do think Tom Lee's completely wrong and the NASDAQ is just flirting with that bloody red volume and also just cratering downwards. Looks like a complete head and shoulders. And this is just classical bear flag pattern. I expect jobs to come in. I have absolutely no clue what, how jobs are going to come in. Uh, the expectations are basically set up for 176 for previous 200, 148, 136. So they revised private down a little bit from when we last covered this. 
unemployment to be 4.1. I think this is going to be the number that you're going to have to be paying attention to the most along with average hourly earnings. So that's going to be the inflationary and the unemployment numbers are going to be the two. The payroll numbers, I don't think they sway the market as much as those two. However, they're going to still play a role in it. So Keep your eye on that. Keep your eye on government payrolls to see if these increase and make up the majority of private and non-farm payrolls. Because if you look at manufacturing payrolls, they are just cratering like no tomorrow because you're in a recession probably. But they will never admit that to you. We also got the fear and greed uh, back in fear territory. So are we basically going to buy fear or are we just going to run for the hills and or put the ostrich in the, uh, the hole in the ground? and basically hide. I don't really know, but if you were playing anything on the Amazon or Apple front, well, we'll give you the good news first. Uh, the good news is that Apple didn't crater in after hours trading. So it did, but it can't. it's coming back, right? It's actually green uh, on the after hours trading, holding that 219.50 number. Okay, need to get above 220 really to be uh, truly bullish. You got above that, slammed down during the day and subsequently just kept selling off. We'll see how that all plays out. If we go to the five minute chart, you can clearly see what happened here, right? So earnings comes out and we get that, that standard wiki candle there. We drop, form a new low, push back up. So this is very reminiscent of Netflix, kind of like Microsoft, where it could be up one, 2%. So I don't think Apple's really gonna move tomorrow necessarily. I think it actually could end in green. And thus the question is, do we buy more? Well, let's actually look at Lux Algo just to see what it's telling us on Apple. So first of all, you got a bullish signal on the smart money flow. You are not near necessarily support. RSI has not crossed over. And I'm actually gonna go to the four hours so you guys can see a bit better. You are in a chop zone, right? So bearish trend, have supporting price actions around here. That's why we bounce similarly to how Microsoft bounced that we talked about previously and why it bounced there. And subsequently it was green. It wasn't really green a whole lot. And we'll actually, let's circle around to Microsoft for you guys to see what I was talking about, right? So Microsoft on earnings, right? Oops, uh, we can see that on earnings, kind of caught a bounce and then just fizzled afterwards. So that's not necessarily what we wanna see. We wanna see continuation in Apple and Microsoft, but they're below the 50 day moving average for Microsoft. Apple, however, is not, and that's why that 212 number comes into play because there's a lot of carnage that could happen, but it's also forming that head and shoulders pattern kind of right there for Apple. So it's gonna be very important for Apple to rally. If Apple actually falters tomorrow, then the rest of the market's coming down with it. And the reason I said Tom Lee was wrong is because your precious IWM, what happened to that rotation? What, 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 where did that rotation come from? Let's actually go to the uh, performance for the week and we can clearly see there is some rotation here. Like, But if I look at this, I'm like, I don't know where all your money is going because nothing is really <laughs> green on the indexes. So I am generally clear is where everyone's money is going. Now, I can tell you for certain it's uh, leaving Amazon because, oh boy, uh, this is where the part gets bloodier and bloodier, ladies and gentlemen. And Amazon, you were already flirting with that 50 quite some time, right? One rejection, two rejection, three rejection, and now you're gonna start flirting with that 200. You can also be in a broadening wedge right here, which is just bearish. I'm just throwing every bearish intonation. Is there any bullishness with this? Um, you're near the 200, and thus you could be in an area where you're gonna catch a bounce. You break 168.36 in any way, shape, or form, I would say, on open tomorrow. Uh, look down below because Amazon is going to be coming down to see you very soon. Uh, classical head and shoulders pattern possibly forming here, now completing. I do predict if we simply measure this because a standard measurement there, breaking of the neckline right there, projects us towards that 145 number, that 200 day sitting down below. So we need to keep an eye on that. And subsequently, if we did break that, that would actually fill this previous gap that we had here from earnings. So I would get bullish on Amazon around the 160 to basically 145 number, but really I don't see the markets doing anything really that is not bearish because you're, as we've gone through these earnings, we have seen extreme weakness from Microsoft, Google, Netflix, Amazon, Intel, and we did see some of the chips go up, but look at AMD, right? Talking about the chips, 
earnings, pump and dump, right? So everything has been a pump and dump recently. And subsequently, the question is, okay, it's break every support level that you're drawing out is breaking. I was bullish on the market for let's say the first half of the year and I was starting to be a little skepti skeptical with the latest earnings because I was like, okay, it's not really doing what I'm thinking, right? So I stopped playing. I, I played a couple of things, lost money. I've shared that with you guys on the, the channel that I lost money on those, but I stopped, right? That's the main important thing. I said, my theories are breaking. I need to reevaluate and just see what happens. And I'm glad I did because everything, Microsoft was horrible. Meta was a good play, but Meta is not really doing that great, right? Uh, gap up on earnings and then sold off subsequently from open. So it's still following the trend. You're playing the possibility of that gap fill. It did bounce off the 50. So that was good. But it's like, if I look at Amazon, right? It's just selling, right? You're just selling, 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 coming to the 200. I'll update you guys in the weekend deep dive on Amazon because I'll have a little more price stability here to really guide you of what's happening next. However, I personally would not be touching it with a bullish intonation. And if you want an example of something you need to just run away from and or may buy at this point once it stops falling is Intel. And oh boy, did you crater in after hours. You're down, I, guys, I, I can't believe I'm about to say it. You're down 20 four percent and fatal cover this on the live stream so make sure you guys go check over that, that that commentary but i'm just i i i don't know what to say you're just you're gone like if we go to the daily right um please stop arguing bullishness for intel because you have just shattered the low of 24 dollars, right and after i was training you're at 23 dollars and 59 cents uh this was a massive area of support and you just went and there's nothing, literally nothing to save you. So if we play this out to be an A to B pattern on the way down, um, I'm gonna have heart palpitations when I tell you this one. You're going to $9.38 if this completes. Intel at sub $10 probably hasn't happened since a very long time. So let, let's look at where we're at in historical context. Broken this support, right? Support has been invalidated here. I'm seeing support around the 21. I'm seeing support around the 18 and support around the 13. Let's see how many times you're going to bunk your head on the way down. I'll keep you guys updated of Intel. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so that you get updates on Intel. But for me, $12.42 is probably where Intel is going. I don't think you go all the way down to $93. Oh, sorry, $9.38. I think $12 is where you're gonna find. We're probably gonna see volume capitulation coming in Intel. I do, maybe you get a gap fill, but that's 23%, guys. That is that is algo selling. That is everyone and their mother is selling, and I would not touch this thing with a 200-foot pole because, boy, oh boy, anyone is going to lose their heads. I personally was thinking Intel sub-20 is where I'd be looking at, it, and I was saying that in the 2022 era. So maybe I'll be validated, right, that that's happening, but Intel has a lot of problems and this is just highlighting it, right? The chip sector is extremely overvalued. So you're even maybe getting the bad news of AMD, the, not, the sentiment shift in NVIDIA. You're just getting everything pounded into you. Maybe it's not necessarily the company. It could be the market, it could be the sector. However, let's just look at the chart and the chart's basically saying lower lows ahead, support incoming around those levels that I mentioned. Throw it down in the comment section below of what you're buying, what you're selling. Are you buying VIX calls? Are you looking at it? Make sure you guys throw it in the comment section below. Are you buying Nike? Are you looking at any of the tech stocks? I'm really curious to see what you guys have. And then again, I hope you have a wonderful end of your week. Happy weekend to you all. And I'll see you in the Weekend Deep Dive Sunday, 3 or 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we really release it normally. So make sure you guys have bell notifications on so you know when that's coming out. And we'll, it's going to be a jam-packed one because we're going to be talking about all these stocks. Definitely give you an update on Intel, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, the markets, yield curve, everything. It's just going to be a jam-packed one. It's going to be a pretty long one. So make sure you guys tune in for that. And it's going to be a fantastic one. Thank you all so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.